a very good afternoon to all of you and thank you esteemed chairpersons for the kind introduction i must thank at the outset to the uh, organizing committee dr anuj maheshwari dr narsing verma dr murthy and dr anubha for giving me this opportunity and uh, today uh, i am going to talk about a very important subject that is anemia of chronic infections which is very less talked about and need more uh, discussion in such conferences so my topic would be under following uh, sub topics uh, that will be discussed uh, i'll tell you about certain uh, points about chronic anemia of chronic infections about prevalence etiology and pathophysiology its clinical features evaluation how to manage the infection of uh, anemia of chronic infections so what we should under we should know about the anemia of chronic disease it is a mild to moderate severe anemia with a hemoglobin ranging between 7 to 12 g per deciliter it is usually associated with chronic infections and inflammatory disorders and some of the malignancies also and the newer terminology which is being given to this kind of anemia is anemia of inflammation it is most common among hospitalized patients and it develops in patients with cellular immune activation and it is the degree of anemia is usually correlated to immune activation in that particular patient if we talk about the prevalence of this uh, anemia of infection or inflammation it is the second or third most common form of anemia after iron deficiency anemia and thalassemia it is really difficult to tell the exact prevalence rate of this condition because this is usually confused with iron deficiency anemia and usually a diagnosis of exclusion in any of the patients and the incidence increases with the increasing age with the, uh, affecting almost 77% of the elderly where there is no clear cut cause of anemia and usually it uh, is because of multifocal etiology and if we talk about the anemia in infectious disease it is common in developing and under developing countries and uh, if it is because of malignancies and inflammatory insect diseases the prevalence is most common more common in developed countries there is an another entity with the name of acute variant of uh, anemia of chronic diseases after surgery after major trauma after myocardial infarction or sepsis and this is known as anemia of critical illness it is almost having similar features of anemia of chronic diseases like low serum iron high ferritin blunted response to erythropoietin and it is most probably because of tissue damage extensive tissue damage and acute inflammatory changes and it is uh, supposed to be a variant of anemia of chronic diseases which is characterized by shortened red blood cell survival in this particular uh, type of anemia and there are various inflammatory diseases which may be associated with this anemia like uh, infections like uh, most of the viral infections including hiv bacterial infection parasitic maybe fungal or helminths malignancies may be hematological malignancies or maybe solid tumors various autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis systemic lupus erythematosus and connective tissue diseases vasculitis sarcoidosis inflammatory bowel disease systemic inflammatory response syndrome in chronic kidney disease and inflammation also this anemia can occur and the prevalence among infectious diseases are almost 18 to 95% and if it is with cancer in cancer patients almost 30 to 77% in autoimmune disease almost 8 to 71% and uh, in solid organ transplant patient it occurs in 8 to 70% patient in ckd and inflammation or most 25 to 30% of patient if we talk about the pathophysiology the causal stone of this type of anemia is the main stay is hepcidin which is induced by the chronic the inflammatory uh, reactions and it leads to alteration in iron metabolism causing reduced absorption of iron from gi tract increase the increasing the trapping of iron in macrophages thus making it unable to uh, for the use or uh, iron stores are plenty but the 
serum, uh, iron levels are reduced, uh, causing hypophidemia, the low iron binding capacity, low transferrin level, and there is always an inability to increase erythropoiesis in response to anemia in these patients. There may be death of red cell precursors also within bone marrow, and there is always a relative decrease in EPO production. Normally, in normal circumstances, there is an inverse relationship between hematocrit levels and serum EPO, which is disturbed, which is not maintained in anemia of chronic diseases. And the minor component may be due to decreased red cell survival also, and this reduced red cell lifespan may occur in cases of acute inflammation, which is characterized by increased uh, macrophage activity. The anemia is usually normocytic, normochromic, but it can be so in some cases, in uh, severe cases, it can be microcytic and hyperchromic as well. This uh, slide is showing the, um, how uh, inflammatory stimulus can activate monocytes and T cell, further leading to overexpression of hepcidin in liver, which inhibits iron absorption from gut, increases macrophage activity and trapping of iron. Uh, there is always inhibition of erythropoid proliferation and availability of erythropoid in response to anemia. So uh, let us see the, what are the effects of cytokines on iron metabolism and erythropoiesis, where TNF-alpha inhibition of erythropoietin production effects, uh, causes stimulation of ferritin synthesis in red blood cell, uh, enhances degradation and phagocytosis of effete red cells. It directly inhibits erythropoiesis, where IFNIY inhibits production of erythropoietin increases intracellular iron by stimulation of DMT1 and inhibition of ferroportin, increased nitric oxide production and inducible nitric oxide synthetase, mRNA expression, etc. IL-6 increases iron uptake while by DMT1 activation. It reduces TFR by decreasing TFR RNA expression and down-regulates expression of SL4A1 in erythroid precursors. IL-4 and 10 also increases ferritin by action on iron regulatory elements and proteins. So hepcidin, which is a master regulator of iron hemostasis, is a peptide with antimicrobial potential, and its expression is induced by iron in the liver and also by LPS and IL-6. And its overexpression finally leads to iron deficiency anemia and hepcidin knockout to iron overload also. It inhibits diurnal iron absorption, and the basic mechanism is by uh, the degradation of ferroportin, which is the transporter of iron from uh, uh, the cell to the outside, which is a membrane protein. So this diagram is clearly showing how epsidin is going to increase the macrophage activity and degradation of ferroportin. So iron is somewhere related to immunity and infection also. It affects cell-mediated immune function, and thus host responses are also affected towards pathogens. And we all know that microbes need iron for proliferation and pathogenicity, where cytokines and acute phase proteins, they regulate iron metabolism genes under inflammatory conditions and then finally lead to development of anemia of chronic disease or iron limitations for pathogens. So we can say that ACD may result from the endeavor of the body to limit the availability of iron for invading pathogens and to strengthen antimicrobial immune effector pathways inside the body. So these are the laboratory features through which we can identify uh, the anemia of inflammation or of chronic disease. This is basically normal strict, normochromic. But with increasing severity and duration, it can become hypochromic and eventually microcytic also. There is absolute reticulocyte count is normal or maybe slightly elevated. There is hypopheremia, decreased serum transferrin also, IL-6, hepcidin, and hypopheremia. There is normal to increase serum ferritin, and marrow iron stains are there. So uh, how can we differentiate between uh, anemia of chronic disease and iron deficiency anemia? If we see the laboratory values of iron, this is reduced in all uh, three forms, whether it is ACD, IDA, or the, both the uh, conditions are coexisting. Serum transferrin levels are reduced in anemia of chronic disease, while it is increased in anemia 
of uh, iron deficiency anemia and uh, reduced in if the both the things are coexisting transferrin saturation is reduced in both acd and ida and even the both the things are coexisting ferritin is normal to increased in acd while it is reduced in iron deficiency anemia and reduced if both the things are coexisting soluble tfr is normal in acd while it is increased in ida and it may be normal or increased if both the things are both the conditions are coexisting ratio of tfr to long ferritin is low less than 1 in acd it's high more than 2 in ida and high if the both the things are coexisting and cytokine levels are increased in acd while it is normal in ida and may be increased if both the uh, conditions are coexisting so how to differentiate between acd and acd plus ida anemia Uh, first of all uh, we know that there is a uh, clinical evidence of inflammation and transferrin saturation if it is low below less 16% then we have to rule out other causes of anemia also for that we have to get ferritin levels done if it is less than 30 mg per liter this may be because of iron deficiency anemia if it is between 30 to 100 mg per liter Uh, serum transfer is determination should be done if it is more than 2 then both the uh, conditions are coexisting if it is less than 1 then it may be because of acd and if ferritin levels are more than 100 the uh, it is to be diagnosed as acd so hypoferemia we are discussing since beginning it is uh, there and it is the uh, most significant sign of uh, uh, anemia of chronic diseases and it is a defining feature but where decrease in transferrin concentration it develops more slowly because of its longer half life of 8 to 12 days in comparison to uh, the shorter half life of iron which is only 90 minutes marrow iron stains are rarely required and it is just to obtain uh, the content of and distribution of iron in the body so how to manage it is the most important part of the topic how to manage this kind of anemia in such scenarios the most basic thing is to treat the underlying disease and if uh, the it is present in the setting of infections inflammations and malignancy certain other things are always to be looked for like for any occult hemorrhage iron b12 or folate deficiency hemolysis or any drug reactions and the treatment modalities are uh, as usual the blood transfusions iron supplementations or erythropoietic agents and treatment of underlying disease is really very important in such scenarios transfusions are uh, may be required in both the uh, anemia of chronic diseases and iron deficiency anemia iron supplementation is really not needed in anemia of chronic deficiency because we know that iron stores are plenty Uh, only serum iron is reduced but if both the anemias are coexisting we all have to always check for the laboratory parameters it may be required in certain scenarios erythropoietic agents is uh, may is are required in anemia of chronic diseases and in iron deficiency anemia uh, if it is coexisting it may be required if there is no response to iron therapy alone so the initial approach for this uh, the management of anemia of chronic disease is the correction of underlying disorder and uh, the degree uh, of response to the treatment it depends upon the underlying disorder and several other factors where the uh, inflammatory component is controlled and if there are any other contributing factors uh, coexisting or not and other complicating factors like blood loss deficiencies of iron folate and vitamin b12 should always be treated for and this may obviate the need of blood transfusion and erythropoiesis stimulating agent as well but blood transfusion or red blood cell transfusions or use of an erythropoiesis stimulating agent may be necessary for those patients with severe symptomatic anemia Uh, so we have to or we should rather measure the plasma erythropoietin concentration which may be helpful in these patients who have symptomatic anemia or who have not responded to the treatment of their underlying disorder or who to have who are uh, who continue to have symptomatic anemia and requiring further treatment 
the so the patients who are uh, with autoimmune disorders like rheumatoid arthritis or malignant conditions or aids uh, who have epo levels of less than 500 uh, they may respond to administration of an erythropoietic stimulating agent and it can be given once per week while another uh, anti another uh, agent that is derbepoietin has an effectiveness equal to that of epo when it is given once every two or three weeks. Supplemental iron should be given in every patient who is receiving EPO or derbapoietin in order to maintain transfer in saturation of more than or equal to 20% and a serum ferritin level of more than or equal to 100 nanogram per ml. Because our aim is to maintain a short range response to anemia while the investigations are going on and the underlying disease is to be still find out, it is always preferred to use EPO rather than derbapoietin. So what should be the dosage of these drugs to treat these kind of anemia? There are two treatment options available. The standard dosing of EPO is to start with 100 to 150 units per kg subcutaneously three times weekly along with supplemental iron and the patient should respond the hemoglobin should rise by 0.5 gram per deciliter by two to four weeks if there is no elevation in the hemoglobin concentration by six to eight weeks the regime can be intensified further to daily therapy of 300 units per kg three times weekly or alternatively, we can give 30,000 to 40,000 units of EPO subcutaneous once per week. And that is almost equivalent to 140 to 190 units per kg three times per week for a 70 kg person. This dose can be increased to 60,000 units if patient does not respond or if hemoglobin does not rise by the end of four weeks uh, by uh, up to one gram per deciliter. But it is not worthwhile to continue EPO in patients who do not respond at the end of 12 weeks. So to avoid the adverse effect of EPO, it is said, it is recommended that in each, uh, in the EPO treatment should always be initiated when the patient's hemoglobin is less than 10 gram per deciliter and to stop the treatment when the hemoglobin level reaches to uh, 12 gram per deciliter. The double protein is in the, uh, should be given in the range of 60 to 100 mcg per week or 300 mcg every three weeks. And uh, because, as I already said, we are looking for a rapid short-term response of the anemia, the double protein with its prolonged half-life may result in excessive and prolonged stimulation. So EPO is preferred for this purpose. Supplemental iron should, uh, can be given uh, to maintain the transfer in saturation and to maintain the ferritin level. Intravirus iron is more effective than oral iron and if patients do not respond to oral iron, it is always preferred to give intravenous iron if the patient do not respond to EPO treatment alone. The blood red uh, pack cell transfusion is appropriate when the patient with ACD develops symptomatic anemia or if there is insufficient time for the patient to respond either to the treatment of the underlying condition or to respond to the treatment with an erythropoiesis stimulating agent. So to conclude, I can say that uh, the, un the, uh, to understand anemia of chronic disease and consequent diagnosis of it has continuously, continuously faced many of us physicians and the actions of several pro and anti-inflammatory cytokines as well as hormones produces the suppression of erythropoiesis in these patients. The majority controlled iron release from the intestinal mucosa and marrow macrophage via ferroprotein uh, and the future treatment options should be targeted at the gene coding these cytokines as well as using anti-inflammatory food supplements like fatty acids and vitamin D we are talking about. The use of iron supplementation in conjunction with ESA may also be beneficial in certain scenarios. So the thank you so much for